Okay, we're rolling. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steve Curry. I'm the founder and president of uh, MetaCloud. I'm Todd Cranston Cuevas. Todd, what are we going to demo today? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Um, we actually wanted to give this time back to uh, the community and talk about things that we thought were important um, to OpenStack in general. Mm -hmm. um, for example, celebrating our wins as a whole for all the companies here uh, at the OpenStack Summit. <clears throat> um, and advance to the next yeah. slide. There we go. So a lot of us have some tremendously amazing, fantastic, great wins mm -hmm. um, in our space with our solutions mm -hmm. that involve OpenStack. The problem is, is that a lot of those customers, because they're very big, they don't always let us talk about who they are. Yeah. And it's a bummer because everyone wants to know, you know who's had wins and we've had analysts um, and articles and information dispersed that says that potentially OpenStack is not fully ready for prime time or production. But mm -hmm. I think everyone here would agree that OpenStack is ready for production. Absolutely. And as I've been to all of the OpenStack summits uh, through the last couple of years, I've seen this community get bigger and bigger. It's because we're winning and we're doing a great job at acquiring new customers and building great solutions that uh, customers need to make their business successful. So what I would like to suggest to everyone here today is that we find more creative ways to celebrate our wins and we can do that thanks to uh, the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, if you look at the bottom there, OpenStack has debuted a new page that will allow you to, in some sense, talk about your win without really getting into the legal issue of attaching it to your company's name. So I think what's most important here is that OpenStack is recognized for wins within the enterprise. It's being adopted by the enterprise. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So for example, we have a very large company that we had a massive win with. They've been using our product for about a year. We'd love to talk about them because we think it's important for the community to continue the momentum of OpenStack, um, but we can't because of a legal agreement that we won't mention their name. But what they could do, what we could suggest to them, and what we will suggest to them now that we know about uh, OpenStack and what they've done with um, their user stories page is ask them to talk about the fact that they use OpenStack in a generic sense um, at the OpenStack user stories page. So for example, our customer could go there and talk about that they do use OpenStack, mm -hmm. how they use OpenStack. It wouldn't necessarily be tied to MetaCloud in any sense, mm -hmm. um, or your company, for example, with your customers, but it builds momentum. It lets analysts know that OpenStack is getting traction, um, that there's great wins out there, and it lets everyone kind of know how OpenStack's being consumed and used uh, to make large companies or companies big and small uh, more successful, more agile, um, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. And again, it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, if the community wins, we all win. So. Uh, it behooves us all to basically make sure that we're getting uh, our clients to recognize that they're using OpenStack and, and openly uh, just generally let everybody know that they're driving their enterprises on OpenStack. Um, I don't know if we wanted to go with that. Well, yeah, so I think mm -hmm. we just want to promote the idea of, of thinking about a new way to talk mm -hmm. about your wins and it's a, a bit washed out of maybe your, your brand name or your, or your logo, but I think it's, uh, it's great for the momentum of OpenStack. I think it's a really important time for OpenStack and companies that are built on OpenStack solutions to really celebrate their wins. Um, and it may not be in the sense that you would like to for the, the, the maximum benefit that you would get for uh, connecting your brand name to that customer's name, but um, for the community and for OpenStack, we think it's very important. So we would encourage everyone to go to openstack.org slash user dash stories mm -hmm. um, and talk to your customers, the wins that you've had in, uh, in your organization and, and talk to them about submitting their use case um, on openstack.org mm -hmm. so that people can learn about those use cases and how that technology is being used within enterprises, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we can so we've actually got a two-part uh, discussion here. We mm -hmm. wanted to talk about companies uh, letting uh, everyone know about the wins they've got with an OpenStack via this um, OpenStack page. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to talk about uh, addressing the needs 
uh, around the user of OpenStack. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there's. I think from my perspective, just looking at the documentation that exists in OpenStack.org uh, website and some of the other documentation I've seen, it's it's not that the documentation is good, it's exceptional. So please don't get me wrong, I think that there's just been huge community involvement and just tremendous generation of documentation. It's just, we come into a little bit of an identity crisis of figuring out, you know, how do we define a user? And we were thinking about this a little bit in terms of we have people who are now consuming OpenStack as a product and much of the documentation that is there is aimed squarely at a lot of developers, systems administrators, operations people, but the people who are actually going to be interfacing using the dashboard, perhaps writing code, just basically deployed against OpenStack, the documentation is a little bit more difficult to reach and find. And then it's also an issue of just defining what a, what a user is for the community. The community does have a definition of a user in the community uh, draft charter. Uh, that includes a definition of roles, organizational um, affiliations, market specializations, geographic regions. I think today I'd really like to think more about the roles and especially those people who are going to be using it as a product. So, you know, the roles that are defined by the charter, if, if you just take a look, I mean, it covers just about everything you'd ever do with OpenStack. Um, I think really the first one, the consumer, is probably one of the target audiences that I think really needs to be addressed. Much of the documentation is not hitting that target right now, and um, I think you could really brand a product much more effectively if you're hitting the consumer. Um, the other area is that, um, <clears throat> you know, looking at those people who use it to get things done, you can't really assume that they're also going to be, be the people anymore running the cloud. You know, early adopters were building their own clouds, trying to build it on their own, and then consuming the product. But now, look, for us, we're, we're a product provider. We provide clouds as a service. You have hosted solutions. Uh, you can no longer assume that the person who's now going to be using the dashboard or Horizon to build their stacks really has any idea what's going on under the hood. Um, and again, how do we outreach to that class of user? Um, Again, consumer is a funny term. It's a term that I think goes well with the definition from the charter. The only thing is I'm not too sure how easy it is to understand from the consumer's perspective, but nonetheless, it is, I think, a viable term. Uh, it does reflect the fact that you're going to be consuming the product and using it as opposed to developing it and maintaining it and operationally making sure it's functional. Um, and in terms of how we do we outreach for that subpopulation, um, some of the ways we reach out to groups right now would include, you know, kind of your, your traditional, um, well, let's go past that, I already discussed that, your kind of your traditional user groups. <clears throat> You've got user groups, community welcome guides, pretty good. I think it's very good, actually. Um, the OpenStack operational guide that just came out is, I think, a tremendous effort. That five-day sprint is amazing, what they produced. Uh, and then user stories, as we had discussed, I think, of all of these, it's the user stories that probably hits people right at the heart because they can really understand from a user perspective or a consumer perspective. Um, I do think that there needs to be a, a way of designating consumers on a more um, clear level so that we can have uh, perhaps user groups or other organizations specifically for people who are IT operational folks, people who are perhaps internal developers who will be given access to the dashboard to be able to, um, on their own, basically deploy systems for testing or for development, um, and also for um, IT uh, stakeholders and executive kind of decision makers. Um, it, it's, it's a little bit interesting. I've been going to a lot of user groups lately, and as you might expect, they're typically 80, 90 percent engineers, uh, operations folks, systems engineer, and they are very interested in OpenStack, but again, very much from the low-level operational uh, side. Ultimately, you do have to reach your consumers, though, because that's, you know, that's who's going to drive your product adoption. So again, it's not so much like I necessarily have an answer, um, but I do think it's something that as uh, an organization, there has to be a significant focus on. Uh, some really, I think some highlights of the year are uh, the GNOME, uh, they had a women internship program, uh, developed some really interesting, good documentation that was exceptional. Um, aimed, I think, squarely at this 
consumer population. Relatively easy to understand, gave a very good modular overview of how uh, OpenStack works and was uh, accessible. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is it's interesting, like Horizon is a big part, obviously, of how you would interface as a consumer. I, as a test, I kind of looked to see how hard it would be to find a dashboard page or even an image. It took about 15, 20 minutes to find it. Uh, there was one quick image in the Getting Started Guide, and then the, uh, res the rest of the uh, information you would need to use Horizon is actually under the Administration Guide for Nova, but buried way deep in the Interface section. As a consumer, you would never look that deep into technical documentation to find essentially a, a user guide. So again, I'm just thinking that there has to be a slight refocusing. Nope. Perfect. So I would just like to ask that everyone in the community uh, consider giving back to uh, the OpenStack Foundation, OpenStack consumers by potentially submitting documentation that helps end users or consumers mm -hmm. understand how they can more easily access OpenStack, I can more easily use it, find the simple things that they need just mm -hmm. to get started. I think mm -hmm. if we can drive adoption at the consumer level, you know, it helps us all win again. And I think it's something that when we look at, at uh, OpenStack and mm -hmm. kind of where some gaps might lie, um, enabling the user and the consumer at the uh, Horizon dashboard level or the mm -hmm. API level, um, better understand how they can consume mm -hmm. and, yeah. and not be so frustrated when they get started initially. Mm -hmm. So appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye-bye.